Hi, in this video we're going to look at one more big deal theorem about limits for this part of the chapter. There will be a few more later in the chapter, but this is the last big deal one for right now. Uh, it's called Sandwich Theorem. It's also sometimes called Squeeze Theorem or Pinching Theorem, and we'll talk some more later about why it's sometimes called that. So to start with, we're going to look at an example of a function where sandwich theorem would be an appropriate theorem to use. And we're first of all going to talk a little bit about why we need another theorem, why the things we already have won't work for this problem. So one of the theorems we have uh, has to do with basically using substitution as a shortcut to figuring out answers to limit questions. We always want to remember that a limit is not really about what happens at x equals a, or in this case at x equals zero, but sometimes we can use that shortcut to figure out the answer to a limit problem. Uh, we run into trouble here though, we could not substitute x equals zero into this function because of the one over x would be undefined. So we can't use a substitution shortcut theorem. The other big deal theorem we talked about was about functions that agree at all but one point. And so we basically used that theorem when we were able to simplify the function into another function where we did some sort of algebra to basically change the domain of the function at a single point conveniently for those problems, that point happened to be the one where we couldn't use a substitution shortcut. So there's not really any simplification we can do on this problem. Uh, one of the x's is inside the trig function and the other x squared in this problem is not in a trig function, so there's not anything really we can do to uh, simplify those. So this is the kind of problem where we're going to use sandwich theorem. So let's look a little bit at the theorem and then we'll come back to this example. All right, so here's the theorem uh, as it is stated in our textbook. Our book calls it Sandwich Theorem, but as I said, some other books call it Squeeze Theorem or Pinching Theorem, and we're going to talk about why it has those other names as well. All right, so there are a few key parts to understand about this theorem. There is a lot in the statement of the theorem, so we want to kind of break that down into the pieces and make sure we understand each piece of the theorem. Okay, so one of the parts of the theorem is that it says we have functions g of x, which is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to h of x. This is really the sandwich part of the sandwich theorem. Because what this part of the statement means is that we have three functions. We've got one function, y equals g of x, whose outputs are less than the outputs for a function f of x so g of x would be below f of x, and that function has outputs that are less than or equal to h of x, so below or maybe equal to h of x. So in terms of graphs, we would have a g of x function, maybe an f of x function in between it, and an h of x function above it. So this is the sandwich part where I've got these two functions, g of x and h of x, that are sandwiching that function f of x. That function f of x generally would be the function we're interested in finding the limit of. Another important part of the if part of this theorem is that we have this statement here about the limits. So it's important to notice which functions this statement is talking about. So it's talking about the g of x and h of x functions. That would be the two functions that are basically sandwiching the function that we're interested in. And what this statement says about the limits is that the picture I drew couldn't actually be correct to use this theorem because the statement says that as x approaches c, the limit of the outputs of g of x has to be the same as the limit of the outputs for h of x as x approaches that same x coordinate and they both have to be a real number l and agree. So this picture that I drew over here isn't quite correct, it does show a sandwich but what I need to show is a sandwich that actually squeezes together at the middle. So this is really the squeeze part of this theorem. So the picture could be modified to look a little bit like this where I've got some function h of x coming to a point. Maybe there's a point there or maybe not. And our other function g of x comes to the same point as x approaches c. So this bottom one would be my g of x function that's below my h of x function and they're still sandwiching some other function, maybe f of x. But the important part of the limit 
part of the if part of the theorem is that those functions that are sandwiching the f of x function have to squeeze to the same place. So they have to squeeze to the same place. And what the conclusion part of the theorem tells us is that if my h of x function and g of x function sandwich the f of x function and h of x and g of x squeeze to the same point, then the limit as x approaches c of that f of x function has to be squeezed in between and has to be all the same value. All right, so let's go back and look at an example problem. We're going to go back to that example I showed at the beginning and look at how to use sandwich theorem to determine the value of that limit. Okay, so this is the function I looked at at the beginning. Uh, we talked about why the theorems we had before aren't really going to work for this problem, so we're going to need some new theorems to think about here. So the really tricky part with sandwich theorem can be figuring out what sandwich functions to use. What are the g of x function and the h of x function that I can use to sandwich around this f of x function. So this function that I'm working on is the f of x function and I need to figure out what functions I could use g of x and h of x that would sandwich this f of x function. Alright, so this particular problem, there are some convenient features that make it not too terrible to find those sandwiching functions. So we're going to look at that, but in general this can be a pretty tricky thing to do is come up with what those sandwiching functions would be. Alright, so the key thing here is that I have a sine function in here. And I do know something about a sine function and how a sine function always has outputs that are between 1 and negative 1, no matter what the input of the sine function is. All right, and that's true for any value of theta. So this works pretty much the same way if you have a cosine function in there as well. You can start with the same inequality, that the outputs of a cosine function are going to be trapped between negative 1 and 1. All right, and unfortunately I don't just have sine of theta or sine of x in the original problem. I have sine of 1 over x. But this inequality is still going to be true except at the one place where I can't plug in a value and I don't get an actual value of theta from plugging in a value of x. So that would be when x is 0. So this inequality is still true for all x except when x is 0. Fortunately, the limit isn't really asking us about what happens at x equals 0, it's asking us about what happens when x is near 0. I now have a sandwich. I have this sine of 1 over x function trapped between negative 1 and positive 1. But what I don't have is the squeeze part yet of this theorem. So I don't have those two functions kind of on the ends that are squeezing to the same place. You also might notice that I don't quite have the right function in the middle. Conveniently for this problem though, I can multiply through this inequality by something and as long as I'm not multiplying or dividing through by a negative number, it's going to preserve the inequalities. So if I take this inequality and multiply through by x squared, which is always positive, so I'm going to take that previous step and just multiply through everywhere on that inequality by x squared. x squared is always positive except when x is 0, so I don't have to worry about inequalities flipping. So I'll have negative x squared is going to be less than or equal to x squared times sine of 1 over x and that'll be less than or equal to x squared. Alright, so now I have the correct function in the middle, that's my f of x function and that function is sandwiched between these other two functions. This would be my h of x function is x squared and then my g of x function is negative x squared. So this is the sandwich part, but remember there were two parts for this theorem. I have to get the function that I'm interested in sandwiched between these other two functions, but then I also have to show that those two functions squeeze to the same limit, the squeeze part of this theorem. So what I need to determine is what is the limit as x approaches 0, that's the original limit I'm interested in, of these two sandwiching functions of the negative x squared and, so I need to think about that limit, and I also need to think about the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared. And in order to use this theorem, those two limits have to squeeze to the same place. All right, so the limit as x approaches 0, 
of negative x squared. That's a polynomial function. I can just use substitution shortcut and I get zero. And the limit as x approaches zero of x squared, also a polynomial function. So I can use substitution shortcut and I get zero. All right, so the fact that those have the same limit, that's the squeeze part of this theorem. They have to squeeze to the same limit value. All right, so then that's not really the question we were asked, though. We weren't really asked about the limit of those two functions. We were asked about the limit of the function in the original problem. But because I have the sandwiching part, that's one of the important parts of sandwich theorem, and the squeeze part, that's the other important part of sandwich theorem, I can conclude that that limit from the original problem is going to have to be also in between these two limits, and so it's also going to have to be zero as well. And uh, if I were not told to use sandwich theorem to do this work, I should probably say somewhere in my work that what I used was sandwich theorem or squeeze theorem. And below here is my work for that.